Hi everyone, welcome back to C Sharp Corner Live Show. I'm your host Stephen Simon, and I am really excited for this Ask Me Anything show. And uh, if you are someone who are joining us for the very first time, we do this Ask Me Anything show every Thursday at 9 a.m. Eastern. It used to be 10 a.m. Eastern. Okay, so it is 10 a.m. Eastern, but I think the the world just got crazy and they just changed their time. So we Asians don't know much about it, right? So it is it is streaming at the same time it used to, but I don't know. It has changed for some people. So there's a plus minus of one hour. But uh, I'm sitting at my place and I'm streaming at at the same time. So I don't know about you guys, right? So if you're joining us for the very first time, we do this Ask Me Anything show every Thursday. And every Monday we do Azure AI show, uh, and we talk about uh, the entire ecosystem uh, that that Azure has to provide with respect to AI and machine learning. And that is something that is uh, both hosted and run by me. I, I talk um, with presentations, demos, and all that. Uh, then on Wednesdays we talk, we interview one of our C Sharp Corner MEPs, the community guys who take their time to contribute uh, or, or in the community platform, and we just interview them and talk about their journey and how they did it followed by some technical sessions too. And uh, we, we do a lot of other shows like Coffee with Pros and we do virtual conferences. And if you're someone who wants to stay updated with the C Sharp Corner live show, just hit C Sharp Corner and under that, you will find a section that says coming events and then you'll find all the events. Okay, that, that that's that's the standard uh, this way we start, right? So the, the guests, are, let's, let's just talk about the guests of the show today, right? I don't take much of the time and uh, Today we are being joined by Thomas. I I I hope I say it right. Thomas Maurer, right? He is a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft. He has been a fi uh, former Microsoft MVP, which is fantastic. Uh, Microsoft MVP is a great. Uh, I wish to say it's a community, and the guys who just uh, contribute to the community. And uh, he he's a public speaker. If you are someone who is following him on Twitter or on LinkedIn, he you, you know just he's a community rock star. And let me tell you, I had to chase him more than hundred days. I was just looking at the email thread this morning. My goodness, I got the most a high level reference to bring him on the show but right? the, the top level reference still it took me so long and uh, thank you everyone who is joining mdb joy how are you uh, deepak says hi thomas can you talk about azure iot specialization certification definitely deepak we have an expert joining us going to talk about a lot of certifications and microsoft has to provide so definitely looking forward to it and uh, without wasting any time without wasting any ado let's go ahead and invite a uh, very special community rock star joining us all the way from Switzerland, Thomas Maurer. Thomas, welcome to the live show. Hi, Simon. Uh, it's great to finally be on the show. I was waiting for a long time. And by the way, I never had such a great introduction like this one. Uh, so many great memories I just saw. I'm just mm -hmm. away. Yeah, definitely looking at those interviews, I just thought that you are someone who likes to go ahead and uh, speak in local events, conferences, and all that. And, and during this pandemic, might have, uh, you know, uh, given a lot of but but yeah but we we just find found out on how we can go and do this virtual event so yeah but definitely everyone is missing these uh, offline events so Thomas how are you how are things have been at your place you are joining us from beautiful country Switzerland and how are things for you during this pandemic um so far so good I mean I, as you know it's like difficult and challenging for for everyone out mm -hmm. there um 
And but to be honest, I, we're doing quite well. I can't really complain. I mean, of course, there's tough times, but on the other hand, uh, work-wise, uh, we shifted a little bit. As you mentioned, we uh, came mm -hmm. from a lot of doing in-person events, traveling around, doing like uh, our Microsoft Ignite the tour, which was I think planned were like 30 cities around the world, and halfway in, we basically mm -hmm. got shut down because of the yeah. pandemic. Um, but then we switch to online content, which is is amazing, and I think it allows us to reach even more people uh, than ever before. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this live conference has really helped a lot, and we have uh, quite a good uh, uh, people joining from from your community, like Cloud Advocate, and I've been very fortunate to interview them. And uh, Thomas, uh, well, uh, let me just go ahead and mention it. I just cannot stop myself. What an amazing background you have. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I I got inspired uh, by someone you also had in the show earlier, right? Mm -hmm. uh, she like with Isidora. She had uh, came mm -hmm. up with uh, having her personality, as she calls it, in the background, mm -hmm. and was like, "Yeah, probably I should do that too." Because I always had this <laughs> blank white wall, and people were like, "Well, it looks professional, but it doesn't show much of your personality." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think in certain shows, if you are on the other side. I mean, you face that screen, so it's just the white background. But yeah, I, I just love this this entire. So Thomas, um, coming back to as as your uh, destination, says so you are a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft. Let me just go ahead and quickly ask you, what is in cloud advocate, and what do you do in your day to day day to day job? That is an extremely difficult question. <laughs> no. um, well, it, it is it is kind of like a very interesting job, right? And a lot of people think that we are kind of like the former evangelist uh, part where we were basically part of marketing or, or uh, sales and stuff. But the, this is basically an absolutely new role. Um, like it's not part of sales and in, uh, marketing. It's actually part of engineering. And... Our jobs can, like, depending on what, on, on which cloud that we got you're talking to, uh, mm -hmm. it can be very different, like what you do, right? We have a lot of different focus topics, but I think if we would mention it on a very high level, what we do, uh, it is creating content and delivering content, like, for example, as you see now, online presentations mm -hmm. or in-person events or helping with, for example, the Microsoft Docs or Microsoft Learn uh platform to create the great content there but then also on the other hand and i think that is also a very important part of our job is to get feedback from our communities and customers which tell us hey what is working what is not working and then we go back to the different feature teams within engineering and tell them what we hear and try to make things better um, so we are basically on one hand we are advocates for microsoft outside in the communities but we are also advocates in Microsoft for the communities and for our customers to make sure that they are, their voices are heard and they're like they, what they want and uh, their feedback is heard. Definitely sounds very exciting. I think you covered one of the very important topics that you said in the very beginning is not to be confused by the technical evangelist. I definitely remember technical evangelists were the one you, you would find them speaking in, in many events and all that doing demos for Microsoft. Uh, but definitely Cloud Advocate, as you said, work very closely with the engineering team. I think that that is something that uh, differentiates it at, at, at its very core level, that you are the guys who work with the engineering team. You take feedback from the community. Also, you share feedback internally with your different teams right so that, that that's really amazing uh, and, and and it says Thomas you have been a former Microsoft MVP how has this journey been from an MVP right being a being a part of that MVP program moving full-time into Microsoft do you ever miss being an MVP <laughs> um, kind of I, I I would lie if I would say no right uh, mm -hmm. MV, I was an MVP I think for around seven years or something like that oh, and it really truly was something really special. I, mm -hmm. I kind of like the MVP program. I, I I think it's something where, in one hand, it's the Microsoft part, right, where you actually uh, work, get access to Microsoft, like you have an NDA in place, so you get some, like, you can have, like, some deeper conversation also about future products and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then what I, what I kind of, like, find crazy and what I always liked very much is the community aspect of it. I, I I think through the MVP program or to, through the community in general, uh, I have friends now all over the world, right? Uh, I think yeah. if I travel somewhere, chances are high that I know someone 
Um, or if someone travels to like Switzerland also, like I often get, hey, I'm coming to Switzerland, Thomas, what should we meet? Can, like, what can you recommend? And so that is a very cool side effect uh, of it. Um, however, job-wise, I'm, I'm, I feel like now I'm a like a full-time MVP if you want to. Like, I don't have the MVP status anymore, <laughs> but uh, it still feels like being an MVP in, in some sort of way, like still interacting with the community a lot, obviously. And I think mm -hmm. that is that was very important also for me when I when I when I looked at this job, I was like, hey, I want to like that. That is a real benefit. I want to keep uh, on being in that community and work with those fantastic people. Right. I don't want to be just somewhere in the background hiding and work for yeah. important stuff. But not really have that that contact anymore. So that job really gives me uh, that possibility. Yeah, definitely it aligns uh, the way you did your Microsoft MVP program. Now definitely working kind of full time, so that that's pretty interesting. Uh, let Let's go ahead and quickly talk about say say is the the MA is about Azure Learning and Azure Certifications. Anyone who's watching, you want to learn about way to go and learn about Microsoft technologies, how to get certified. Uh, drop in your questions in the comments, and we'll just go and make sure that Thomas answers that <laughs> all those questions. So uh, a very very first question, Thomas. When when you say Azure Learning, right? When you say when I hear the term Azure Learning, what it is about, uh, what are the different resources, and what, what should one strike and what should the one resource that people should hit when I say, hey, I want to learn Azure at the very first place? All right. So there's obviously a lot, right? Um, I, I There are a lot of great resources out there if you want to get started, right? A lot of community members um, are creating awesome content um, uh, when it comes to, to learning. But however, at Microsoft, we also obviously needed something official, right? And so uh, the one stop I send everyone uh, to get started, not just actually with Azure, but like also with other Microsoft technology is now our kind of like new, but not so new anymore, Microsoft Learn, right? Um, yeah. I even have a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> <what I'm talking. laughs> um, it's a, it's, it's a total coincidence. Um, <laughs> no, but, but I think, yeah, Microsoft Learn is really like for, for us, it's really that platform we are working heavily on to actually provide some cool learning paths. And again, I can explain a little bit more what it is, but that is what I recommend. And then there's a ton of other stuff. I mentioned like community uh, projects going on. Like if you're part of you, I mean, you have always great guests on your uh, C Sharp Corner show. And that also obviously helps, right? It's not, um, it's not just about about getting certified it's more of also about learning new stuff right it's like the certification is kind of like a side effect of yeah. learning new stuff yeah so let's go and talk about microsoft learn uh, uh thomas so we, we have seen that uh previously microsoft had this amazing platform that was microsoft virtual academy i look back in around 2014 and 15 that was one resource you would go and actually watch it microsoft has been committed into this community resource for a very long time and I, and I remember uh, we had this channel line it's still there but but it, it's kind of not focused but channel line and then Bob Taylor doing this C sharp courses long time back so, so that that's pretty amazing so how how what is Microsoft learn right how should one go ahead and enroll rate uh, you talk about there's some learning parts so what it is it actually yep so yeah, again, there were a lot, of, as you as you said, we had a lot of like learning platforms uh, like uh, Virtual Academy and much, much more, which are, by the way, were really good. I also liked uh, Virtual Academy a lot. Um, yeah. So Microsoft Learn now is our free learning platform, right? And so that is where we create all our um, new learning modules and learning paths. So basically what we are looking for is to have different learning paths for different topics and then offer different modules within that learning path. So you have your own pace. You can basically work through these different modules and you can say, hey, today I'm doing like two models um, or just one or whatever, and I can focus on that. And we offer that not just for like product specific things, but also we help you to select it, right? Often, for example, you are a, a, a developer or you're an IT pro or whatever, and you need now, now to figure out what do I actually need to learn, right? When I move mm -hmm. to the cloud or when I when I want to focus on something, what do I actually need to to go out? Because there's so much. Um, and so you, 
you're able to basically go and select like your chop like title like the closest which comes to your chop and then we actually recommend you um a set of like learning paths and modules to you now as I mentioned, these are free, and then you can basically yeah. go through. There's a lot of text and models and description. Uh, you also have some quiz at the end, like you can take to actually see if you understood what you just learned. Uh, it also includes videos, for example, uh, in these learning paths. But the great thing, the one great thing I really like is, I mean, the best thing when you do something is hands-on learning, right? Yeah. And not everyone has an Azure subscription. Or not everyone wants to spend his Azure credits he has uh, for for the learning things. Uh, he probably wants to use it for other other projects as well. So uh, Microsoft Learn offers you free sandboxes, which you can use. So you don't need a credit card. You don't need an Azure subscription, uh, but you can actually run Azure um, yeah. in Microsoft Learn and then run commands and try out things and like deploy virtual machines and different services, databases, web apps, and all of that, and then actually try it out. And I think mm -hmm. that is that is one of the great offerings. It's like actually a free platform for people to try out Azure and learn about it, about these different services we have there. Yeah, yeah, definitely Sandbox is something that is really fantastic. And it comes out of the box. On the left side, you have this content and tutorial. It tells you, hey, step one, do this, do that, right? And you just have an entire PowerShell even Azure CLI. You can just all the practice it. One quick question for the people who may not be following it. The Sandbox is more like an interactive uh, uh, ecosystem where you can actually run your subscription. But my quick question would be is that how long will that subscription or that environment will be active? Is it like a one hour? Or a day or I can just log in every time my entire uh, scripts would be running there. So you get certain credits. I, I don't know top of my head what it mm -hmm. is a day, but I think it's like an hour or two a day where you can use it. Um, mm -hmm. But it's then something it goes away again, right? It's not something mm -hmm. which should be like your permanent test environment or something. Mm -hmm. It's really just to give you, you're working on that module, you want to get it done, you work on it, and after you're done, basically you leave it, and um, the stuff is gone again, and we clean it up in the background, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's not something. If you want to build a test environment for long term, then you need to find a different way. Uh, yeah. It's really just a short term um, platform where you actually can go out and, and try things. Yeah, definitely. I think it aligns with the with the concept that hey, there's a uh, one chapter, there's one module that you need to complete. It's so maybe you may take one hour or maybe less than that. So I think that is the ideal time that Microsoft has decided. And and welcome everyone uh, who's joining us again. I see many people joining us on the platform. Uh, one of the users you may know is our head in the cloud, heart in the com community, joining us. So definitely a shout out to this amazing community doing interviews and the live shows. So I just love watching their episodes. And uh, we we're gonna take keep your questions coming. I mean, we're gonna take it towards the end. Uh, we, we're gonna do a little more chit chat with Thomas and how uh, this Microsoft Learn platform. Um, one quick question that Thomas, I just visited Microsoft Learn platform. Looks like I have, I'm at level six. So what are these level six? What are these points? And I also <laughs> see I have some badges, right? So what are all these about at Microsoft Learn? Yep. Uh, so it, there's also some gaming, gamification going on, right? So for mm -hmm. each module. Um, or each part of a module, you get points when you complete it, right? So when you read a page or when you finish the quiz or finish the whole module or a whole learning path, you get points. And that you can also then obviously reach certain levels. Uh, and then you can basically compare with others. Like if you, for example, have a competitive team, which like my team, <laughs> for example, uh, we challenge each other. Uh, where are you? How much did you learn? How much, like, mm -hmm. how far are you? And that obviously can be motivating to actually us doing, like, uh, do more learn modules and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I quickly want to highlight, we have, I think, two people in our team, like two people who completed, um, at least they did a couple of months ago, they completed every single learn module on Microsoft oh, One, right? They, I, I don't know what level that is, to be honest. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> but uh, it's definitely, they did definitely invest a lot of time because we obviously, we need to learn the stuff we are talking about, right? So it's also mm -hmm. for us on the Microsoft side. We also use mm -hmm. it internally um, to prepare. So for example, our field teams, but also our engineering teams use mm -hmm. the same platform uh, to learn. Um, and obviously we need to know about this. And then obviously also we want to learn and figure out, okay, 
is the quality good? Do we miss something? And then we can actually also go and provide feedback for that. Um, so that is the gamification. To be honest, I have no idea. I will quickly check uh, what is what yeah, my level. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 level level two hundred. I'm at level six. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm so high. I'm like, let's see. I, I did a couple of more. I'm at level eleven, but I'm almost done. Mm. I think that you reach level twelve. So what, what are the how many points do you have? Uh, it's 60,375. Oh my goodness. I, I enrolled in a course almost like three months back and I'm still at level six. Not far behind, it's okay. <laughs> you, you work with that. You, know, you don't get credits for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually that's actually awesome that you bring this up because we also like we we wanted to obviously help people um, like taking advantage of learn and obviously give them some awareness that we actually have this awesome platform because again mm -hmm. a lot of people don't are not aware of it right yeah. and so we created the cloud skills challenge um, oh, yeah. during I think we did one during build we did one during ignite and I think there's now maybe one coming which is like generally open but it's like for people who can join that and then finish a certain set of learning paths and modules and when you have done that you basically get a free voucher to do mm -hmm. a microsoft certification exam like which usually again costs a couple of hundred uh, dollars i think or something like that um so you get a free voucher to do that so we i need to check if it's still open but that is something also if you you keep an eye open usually we do that when there are um certain events um then uh keep an eye open for these cloud skills challenges uh which are pretty cool as well well i just checked it right one of the amazing resources i think just changed the branding uh so that people can see i think uh you're talking about this microsoft Ignite cloud skill challenge right yep. and i see anyone who is tuning in i'm gonna drop the link in the comments there you go uh and uh, i think it is valid it says the web page says it is valid until march 31 2021 so we are good to go i think i didn't know so is, is it uh, about any I, exam any, any I, uh, there's a list of exams so it's i think most of the new exams uh like all of the new basically role-based exams like the azure developer azure yeah, Administrator, but also some n365 however i'm not 100 sure if the ignite one is still open i think there was a limitation of time i'm not sure okay. uh, people definitely need to double check on if they can still join that otherwise um I'm pretty sure we will have more of these skills challenges in the future. So just keep an eye on on that um, if there will be a reopening of one. Yeah, and I see, uh, I don't remember the platform exactly, but Microsoft has a page that says Microsoft Events. If you just go there and, and, and attend one of their webinars that is of one or two days, then you then towards the end, they give you a Microsoft free certification voucher. It may be a simple MTA or maybe that, but yeah, I think there are many different webinars also that that's run by maybe a country specific, maybe for India, Singapore, or maybe for US, they do it. And I've seen it and the seats feel very fast, like boom, they're launched and uh, it's all gone. The seats are filled. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and I think I have around how many badges? I have 13 badges. I'm not going to ask you because you may have many. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. But uh, and again, I like with my team, it's very challenging because again, mm -hmm. you have people, they go like nuts and they, they do such a great job in, in learning. Um, and so, yeah, uh, I don't know how many I have, but I was, yeah, I, I think so, it was a couple. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so talking about Microsoft Learn, that you said is an amazing platform and ecosystem built by Microsoft, but you can go and learn anything about related to Microsoft technologies and not just Microsoft technology, Thomas, I also see there are some courses like this related to Python, right? So you start with Python and then there's course followed by the hey, you can go ahead and run your machine learning models on Azure written in Python. So definitely not just related to Microsoft, but uh, some of the best courses coming from the from the developers ecosystem. Uh, yes, and uh, there's a guy joining us. Thank you, man. I love Microsoft <laughs> Learn anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah awesome. we all love Microsoft Learn. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. so let, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about, about that. I see when I land on this page, uh, this 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 entire ecosystem Microsoft also encourages me to go ahead and do the, the certifications, right? And before we talk about the Azure certifications, uh, what is your concept of doing certification? Is it something you do at the first place when you're going for an interview that, hey, I've done a certification, or is it something your organization wants you to do or clients? So what's your ideology behind doing this certification? So 
Most of the time, to be honest, when I did certifications, uh, I think I started because I was working for a Microsoft partner back in the day and we needed mm -hmm. some certifications, like people certified in a specific technology. I think back then I did it, like my first one was on SharePoint. Uh, and uh, to get actually the partner status, right? There's like gold and silver uh, status and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so the company came to me and said, hey, we need someone certified in SharePoint. And so I said, okay, I'm, I'm, what do I need to do? And then I was like, okay, you need to take an exam. However, I didn't realize that studying for this exam um, provides you with, like, I learned a lot. Like, during, like, uh, while I was preparing for the exam, like, uh, when I was learning, I learned a lot about SharePoint, like, things which mm -hmm. I didn't know. So I was like, okay, that's actually cool. And then the other thing was I even learned during the exam, right? So they're coming questions and you're like, Oh, I haven't heard about that one yet. So I looked it up mm -hmm. afterwards. But however, the main thing was like, I, I realized I learned a lot. Like mm -hmm. when I take an exam and prepare for it, um, it, it just helps me to focus on the right thing. And since then, I basically just went out when there was a technology, a, a certification for an exam, uh, or sorry, um, when there was a certification for a technology I was working with, I was like, okay, I want to do that certification because... I need to study for it and I learn everything and I learn more about it. And I, it actually helps me to focus on the right things because you have that skill outline, right? We tell yeah. you basically what we ask you. Like there is a, a outline which says, okay, you need to focus on this. You need to focus on that. And so that is what I did. And then suddenly I became a little bit addicted. So <laughs> I, I just started to do these certification exams and i believe that there's multiple values of it there's one thing obviously within um your job current job you can mm -hmm. obviously go to your manager and say hey i'm now certified in this and that should be a value and maybe it think like it will like help you with a salary bump or with like some more responsibility or you can take over or be the leader of a certain um product or service or whatnot in your company or also, if you find want to find a new job, right? It's always good to have something actually explain that you actually worked with this technology and actually had to work on it. That doesn't mean like if you don't have the certification, you don't know it. Um, mm -hmm. Also, it doesn't mean if you have the certification that you actually <laughs> know it, right? Um, but it's definitely something you have, right? It adds something to your resume. It adds something you can be proud of. And especially also you learn, you definitely learn something uh, by, mm -hmm. while preparing. So that is why I take these exams is actually, it's a guided experience to what we think is important um, uh, to learn. If you want to, for example, become an Azure administrator or an Azure yeah. developer or something like that. Definitely, yeah. I think uh, one one of the cool thing uh, it, it, you, you you won't find if you go to a certification uh, page and you're talking about certification skill, you will find it's a little below, right? I think they just hide it somewhere. I don't know why. <laughs> they just put it towards <laughs> the end, and uh, you can just find they have an entire PDF that covers that. Hey, during uh, the four or five sections in the sections, these are important topics. Definitely not restricted to what they have mentioned into this uh, documentation, but definitely beyond that. But there are some of the best things that you just want to go ahead and learn before you go ahead and opt for any of the certification. So, uh, uh, so uh, Thomas, what was your first certification? Is was it SharePoint? Yeah, it was uh, SharePoint. It was. <laughs> What was it called? Uh, SharePoint. It was not the full SharePoint. It was like SharePoint mm. Web Services, like the free version. They had an ex like a certification for that, um, three point zero or something like that. Uh, I can't really remember the name. I would need to look it up. It's definitely There's in my something. transcript somewhere. Uh, <laughs> but that was my first one, and then mm. from there. I, I worked a lot in that time with Windows Server, right? So I basically mm -hmm. started to do, like, I think it was Windows Server 2008 and 2008 R2 that were then the exams I start doing. There was the, back then, I think it was called the MCITP, yes. uh, Microsoft Certified IT Professional or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, until they very renamed it again to MCE, like Microsoft Certified uh, Engineer right. and Administrator yeah. or something, or ex something, yeah, Expert. Yeah. Yeah. The new one was an expert yeah. and associate. Yep. Uh, and now I think that is also important for people to understand. Uh, back then, um, we basically had the certification were basically very product focused, right? So you got mm -hmm. folk like I got then let's let's say you, I'm I'm getting a certification for Windows Server 2012, um, uh, something like that. 
-hmm. So now we switched actually and said, okay, with Azure, for example, we cannot create a certification for every Azure service. And also like there's so much changes and the value is not just like knowing one Azure service, for example, or like when I, when I speak about Azure, it's also other Azure stuff, uh, other Microsoft stuff, right? But yeah. it's not just knowing like one Azure service. You actually need to be aware of like, how can I bring different services together? So now the, the certification exams are focused on job roles. So we have one, for example, for Azure administrators. We have one for Azure developers. We have one for Azure architects. We have one for Azure security engineers. We have one for Azure DevOps engineers. We have one for Azure IoT developers and so on, right? You get, you get there more. Um, so depending on which job role, you have now different certifications. It's not just product. Uh, focused anymore. It's now chop role uh, or role-based certification. So that's yeah. a big, big change. Yeah, and I see that uh, they have been categorized into role-based and their product-based, their level, their certifications type. So it, it's up to you, as you say, when talking about the rules, the administrator, app maker, business analyst, business user. So definitely you can go ahead and click it and understand some of the prerequisites. You want to go and do it. Some are more like an associate level, some are like expert levels. You want to make sure you have done the previous certifications. Uh, let, let's take a quick question that we just got from my Rich, then we'll talk about it else. He says, what area do you suggest for Azure Developer Associate to go for further certifications? Thomas. So, so if I understand the question correctly, mm -hmm. um, the person is already a Azure developer associate, yeah. right? So it's already, I did already do successful the Azure developer. Mm -hmm. Now, for me now, the question is now, what, like, what are you doing in your work or what um, do you want to do uh, in your future, right? So this is now the question where you need to decide because um, you can go and say, hey, Azure Architect may be the right thing, right? I'm more doing yeah. architectures about the software, about the, the applications I'm doing. So maybe I'm becoming an architect. Uh, there's also one like people who are like developers and then um, they're working a lot with DevOps, right? In that scenario, yeah. you're probably going to be more and focus on the AC400 um, Azure DevOps engineer, I think it's called, mm -hmm. uh, which is also then a great thing if you, if you are these the, the DevOps person, right? Yeah. Uh, it really depends on where you're going. It's not that also not um, that one is necessarily better than the other. Um, mm -hmm. It's really just like, what are you working with, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, it depends. As you said, it depends upon what projects you are working, uh, what knowledge do you have. If you want to go ahead and use a DevOps, it may be Power Platform, it may be the AI ML ecosystem. Uh, you never know. I think. Uh, the, the very best way to get started is the Azure Fundamentals, right? <laughs> and one of the, one of the uh, very famous uh, certifications. And uh, what are your thoughts on Azure Fundamentals? I see, Thomas, uh, you guys at Microsoft has have given the, this uh, compensation for COVID-19. Uh, this course, this certification costs somewhere around $100, but now you guys are giving it for $15. So that, that's really cool. And let's talk about it, but what's Azure Fundamentals and why it should be someone's first certification in for Microsoft Azure. Yeah, that's that's great that you bring this up. So yes, absolutely. So we see that a lot of people obviously have like need to find new jobs and also like want to maybe switch their profession, right? Mm -hmm. And there is also like a lot of demand in the IT industry in general. So we want to make it easier for, for a lot of people to actually go out and get started uh, with these, um, with, with, with like the cloud platforms and, and other services. And so one of the things, as I mentioned before, is you need to have a plan. What do I need to learn? Like how, I, I get this question a lot is like people, they say, well, I'm maybe a developer working mostly on-prem. I'm an IT pro working mostly mm -hmm. on-prem. Or I'm not even in IT, but I wanna get started with Azure. So what do I do? And that is exactly where the Azure fundamentals or in general, our fundamental exams mm -hmm. come in, right? Uh, it really is about learning the fundamentals of, for example, cloud computing, about how a cloud platform works, uh, a lot of basic things. And um, this is this is like the, I also recommend that to everyone who gets started with Azure or um, who, like, who haven't really done the Microsoft exam. I tell them, hey, look, go and learn and study for the Azure fundamentals. And 
um, because that is that is really great. And what what I usually then recommend is then the next step is like, okay, I'm going to do the Azure fundamentals. I look at the skills outline and see, okay, yeah. what do they actually ask, right? What are the questions I need to be, and like the topics I need to know? And then there are two or three or four recommended things I can I, I, I would recommend. First, mm -hmm. obviously, there is Microsoft Learn. We talked about that. We have yeah. an Azure fundamental or multiple Azure fundamental learning paths with modules, which go mm -hmm. exactly through this, right? Uh, they go exactly, they're aligned to the things we ask you in the exam. So that is one thing. The other thing I recommend to everyone is docs. Um, Believe it or not, our documentation platform uh, is pretty, pretty good. Uh, and so the teams invest a lot of time into that. And so I would say, and I challenge everyone out there, um, every question uh, asked in the exam, you can find the information or the answer to it uh, on Microsoft Docs, right? Obviously, you're not allowed to <laughs> yeah, it's a hack. Yeah. This is actually how I prepare. Um, next to Microsoft Learn, this is also how I prepare for, mm -hmm. for exams. Is I look at the skills outline, and then I look, OK, they want to know about, let's say, function, durable functions. So what I do is I go to the Docs platform, look for durable, durable functions, and basically mm -hmm. look what's in there and read that and maybe do a tutorial or something. And then usually that gives me a pretty good understanding of of what they're going to ask uh, in the mm -hmm. exam. Obviously, that's that's a lot of things need to learn, right? Because it's yeah. not one or two things, uh, but it really helps you. And even though obviously uh, the question doesn't come up in the exam, it's mm -hmm. still valuable for you to learn this and to know yeah. about this. So. Uh, I highly recommend that uh, to do. And again, as coming back, the Azure Fundamental uh, exam is really a great place to start for many, many people. And as you said, we currently have that great offering uh, mm -hmm. for people who are impacted by COVID um, job-wise. They can do it for a very reduced price uh, and do yeah. this. Yeah, 15% actually. It, is, it, is, it says $99, but you can just go ahead and do it in $15. And I think this and uh, there's one more certification. I think they were, uh, just a couple of them there, but I think more like an administrator certification too that has come down to like $15. That, that's definitely a great move by Microsoft. And we'll take one more question before people start yelling out in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a question from Deepak. He says, in Microsoft Learn portal, it's mentioned that is a 900 exam will be updated in November 9. Will the same reflect in learning content in MS Learn Portal? That's a very good question. <laughs> yeah, and the funny <laughs> thing about this is I got this question like three times in the last couple of days. Um, <laughs> yes, it will. Uh, we already have some parts online. I think if you currently move to the, if you look at the AC, if you Google, if you use Bing <laughs> to fight the yeah. AC 900 learning path or the Azure Fundamental Learning Path of Microsoft Learn, uh, there is now a a little box on the top saying, yes, the, the exam got updated. Uh, so here is a link to the new learning paths. And I think automatically at this specific date, uh, I think we will hide the old one and basically mm -hmm. show the new one. So you will be still be able, if you have bookmarks to the old learning path, you will be still okay. able to access it. But we will actually have a new, like an updated one, basically. Um, for the new exam uh, topics. Uh, I also want to quickly say that obviously there are changes in there, but it's not that it's a complete different exam, right? It's not mm -hmm. that like, everything you learned so far in Azure Fundamentals <laughs> has been gone. It's still very, very valuable. Yeah, so yeah, definitely Azure is involving, but not that much that uh, this is going to affect <laughs> your entire certification. Uh, one quick question from my end, Thomas. Uh, uh, so uh, when people usually start their Azure uh, journey, right? So they just log into their portal and they create, they create a service. They use one of the service, right? I remember back in 2014, we had only like 14 or 15 services that old Azure classic portal, right? So I, I definitely missed that part. And then we had only a few, now it's grown more than like almost like 200. And the services that was pretty popular to go and get started is the web apps, right? So you just log into portal and you create a web app. What is your one of the favorite services that you use a lot? 
<laughs> uh, that's a good. So I'm I'm more on the IT pro side. So mm -hmm. which someone which like one which comes very natural to me and I yeah. need a lot is like virtual machines, right? That is oh. like one I I just go out and I I then need uh, and just deploy a virtual machine to try something out or run something. Mm -hmm. But there's also a lot of related relation to that. I also like all everything which comes to like Azure management. Like mm -hmm. you, you run your services, for example, like in Azure, but you need to somehow secure them. So for example, if you think about things like Azure Security Center mm -hmm. or um, Azure Policy, for example, as well, those are all cool services to manage the Azure environment, which I'm also uh, very much like. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of like a difficult question. There are so many great services, and it always yeah. depends. I mean, it's like also like when you think about um, like functions, for example, when you do the yeah. whole serverless things. I really like like I, I got started a little bit with that, and so it's like that is pretty cool. And obviously, when we speak about serverless and all that, is then the next one is like Logic App, right? Logic App for me is like magic <laughs> that that is really a service you can leverage for for basically anything so even it doesn't matter if you're a developer an it pro mm -hmm. or you're just getting started it's really helps you to build that automation um mm -hmm. in azure but also for services outside of azure yeah definitely these are some cool services that my azure has brought this logic apps the azure static apps the azure functions uh as pretty cool things out there um do we have any question? Let's just pull it up. Okay, we'll keep on asking. Uh, let, let's go ahead and uh, a little bit talk about um, the certification process, right? So if I go and enroll today in a certification, what is the idle time I should uh, schedule it? How long will be the, the uh, time period for a certification? And how I'm actually evaluated? Is it 40%, 50%, 70%? 70%? So what is that uh, criteria and stuff? Yeah. So that is actually, uh, it, there are multiple like answers depending on where you are. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's that. <laughs> I, 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 will, I, will, I will answer like, like kind of like what I do. Um, so mm -hmm. what I do usually is I look at the certification, I look at it and I kind of like look at it. Okay, how much is something, like how many of the topics I think I'm familiar with and how mm -hmm. many are new? And then I get a kind of like a feeling uh how long it will take me to prepare now mm -hmm. what i do now is i then go out and schedule the exam like the first okay. thing before i even start learning is scheduling the exam because yeah. if i don't get lazy the exam, i will just like okay i will wait and i will Maybe wait another day <laughs> yep yep but if you have a deadline <laughs> at least for me that works really really well because yeah. you need to learn on that um and that is what I do. I then schedule it. It can be like I, I can, depending on how familiar you are with it, like a month or two or three months can be absolutely depending on what you set as a goal, right? Mm -hmm. It can also be you can. I would recommend that you do a little bit ambitious. Like if you have too much time, you're mm -hmm. not gonna gonna leverage it. If it's not enough time, it's also difficult because then you probably can't go through all the material you wanted to go through. So mm -hmm. um, set a realistic but um, ambitious timeline. Uh, mm -hmm. to schedule the exam. And the great thing now these days, uh, the exams you can choose and you schedule them if they are in a test center, like where you actually need to go and you need to go locally and then uh, you do it in a, in a local test center, or you can schedule it to do it online, which is my favorite option uh, mm -hmm. because uh, yeah, it's, it's like you don't have to go, right? You don't yeah. have to go out. You don't have to, it's also like, time slot wise, right? Uh, like mm -hmm. the, the local test center, usually they have a couple of time slots where you can do exams. And mm -hmm. in my region, they are always like booked for the next two, three weeks. So if I want to do an exam, because I know I, I it's, it's probably an updated exam and I already studied for it. Um, I want to do it like, like in a week or something, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I also like to do the new exams to the, and, and pressure myself a little bit. Mm -hmm. So with the online exams, you can choose to do it basically like i think like usually you can do it in the next two days if you want mm -hmm. to and you can also select different times so if you cannot do it during your work time you can even do it outside of work hours i think you could take an exam uh midnight 
uh, mm -hmm. wherever you are. Uh, if yeah, that's you're going to do that. Well, it depends, right? If people are yeah. that, when they are on, at, the, at their best, then uh, you can choose that too. Yeah, um, some people at night maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but okay. that that is I, that I really prefer. Um, and then just be aware that like when you do it the first time, that you have a very cleaned up room, right? There are like mm -hmm. there is a documentation page who actually mm -hmm. explains what you're allowed to have. But imagine that they obviously need to be able to uh, make sure that you can't cheat. So the camera will be on during the exam, like watching mm -hmm. your face. Uh, mm -hmm. The microphone will be on because you, you're not allowed to talk loudly because someone else could actually give you the answers, right? Yeah. Um, and you will not allow to have anything on your like table or anything except from your computer. Uh, mm -hmm. No additional screens. Um, oh. So if you have, for example, TVs or something in the room, they need to be unplugged and things like that. So I usually recommend people get a room where actually go into a room where you actually can clean it up where you don't have to like change everything um like I, for example i had like when i was at work i did it in meeting rooms now i do it in the kitchen right so because the kitchen does not have any screen not have like yeah. I have a nice kitchen table where there's nothing on it um and yeah, then, seen that, yeah. <laughs> yeah and then you need to tell your like uh if you're living with someone you need to make sure that no one comes in into the room okay. because when they can see or hear anyone it basically also could be that you try to cheat, right? So just be aware and plan this out. And also like the first time you do it, I, or every time you do it, I recommend go go to the exam place early, or even if you do it at home, start, it, mm -hmm. start the process of the check-in early. So you don't yeah. have any or anything. Like you can really take your time to set everything nicely up. Um, I think that is that is very important. That is something I always mention to people, like because a lot of things people think then, oh yeah, I quickly do it online and they sit in front of yeah. their computer, but there are actually things you need to think of. So there is so that uh, so is there a person who is monitoring uh, and telling me, hey, this is bad and bad. Is there a real person doing that? Oh, so I, so I don't know, like if mm -hmm. there's like really just want someone watching you one hundred percent. However, okay. um, there the camera is on, so they can potentially click in on you. Um, mm -hmm. One time what happened to me was like, that was like, I don't know, like three years ago, uh, my camera froze. So I did mm -hmm. not realize I was doing the exam and I didn't move anymore. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they have any detection. If that happens, they get an alert mm -hmm. and then someone looks at you. But then some operator in the background came and said, hey, mm -hmm. can you please move quickly? Because we, we're not yeah. sure if your camera is still working. Okay. And I moved and, and they said, yeah, it's not working anymore. And mm -hmm. then what they did is like they stopped the exam. Uh, mm -hmm. And they, then I needed to reschedule it for another time, because again they couldn't obviously not identify if I if the camera's not working anymore. I could have yeah. basically done like took out another notebook and checked out <laughs> the answers, right? Oh, <laughs> make a person sit next to you. <laughs> yeah, but it's you, you get watched, right? Right? Yeah. You agree? And you're also not allowed to have anything else open on your computer except for the exam app. Um, mm -hmm. You're not allowed to run anything. Um, mm -hmm. You also need to take off your watch, like especially if you have a smartwatch or something. Yeah. Um, they look very good that you don't that you're not able to to cheat. And again, I also highly recommend that you like don't because the, the, there is no benefit in getting that mm -hmm. certification uh, without knowing the stuff, right? Yeah. Better fail one time and do it a second time, but then you actually know um, like the technology behind it and you actually learned yeah. it. Um, because again, if you have the exam, the certification. Um, without the knowledge, it, mm -hmm. it, 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 it there's no value in it. There's no yeah, it's exactly, a waste yeah. of time for everyone. Yeah, so you in a working team, then people are definitely going to come to know that hey, you cheated, you don't know anything stuff. And and uh, quickly, I know we are running out of time. And quickly, you did mention hey, if not one, then do it second time. Uh, is there any way one can uh, just apply for a voucher that says uh, okay, let me buy some uh, exams, maybe practice exam, or maybe I may fail? So, is there any any help uh, Microsoft does in that case? Yeah, so that is actually you brought up a very good point. I see you are very informed on that. <laughs> <laughs> I fail. Does that tell you I fail a lot? <laughs> oh no, no. I I just I just know that you know from the. I think it's called. I'm not sure if it's called the second chance or the double mm -hmm. like uh, thing. Yeah. Um, on that, yeah. Which is which is pretty cool. So you can mm -hmm. like sometimes you can buy um, um, special offers, and also you're mm -hmm. if you're working for a partner. 
I think mm -hmm. we also have like special partner offerings where you basically have a voucher where you buy a voucher for an exam. And mm -hmm. then if you fail it, you have a free second shot on it. Um, so you can take it like ex the exact same um, uh, exam again and schedule it. So you need to look out. There are certain offers from time to time on this. Um, also, if you're, for example, a partner company, mm -hmm. uh, they usually sometimes can buy like 10 exam vouchers people can use, but they mm -hmm. only pay for like, let's say eight or something like that. So if a company wants to sponsor their employees, they mm -hmm. can also, there are also some great um, value on this uh, as well. And I, I highly recommend that um, companies and, and partner companies and but also customers are investing that money in their people because again, uh, it will skill them. They will learn a lot. They will be like, they will have more skills uh, yeah. for the daily job and also for the future. Mm -hmm. And um, from an investment side, of course, it is an investment for the company, but it's actually, I think, a very good um, uh, price value uh, yeah. situation if you do that. So is, is it is it uh, is, the, is the partner company for Microsoft certification PSN? Um, oh, yeah. So. Yeah, so I think for the most exams, when you do them mm -hmm. online, it's like Pearson, yes, uh, mm -hmm. for, for that. Uh, but what I meant with partners was like, if you're a Microsoft partner, like um, uh, a consulting partner, right? If you sell okay. Microsoft uh, products or something, you oh, also get some, you get also some special offers, mm -hmm. um, usually like trainings uh, and also mm -hmm. vouchers sometimes. Uh, yeah. But again, it's not always the same, so it, it's like depends. I highly recommend that you talk to your partner manager if you're a Microsoft partner, then talk to that. Um, also, if you're a Microsoft MCT, for example, you have certain benefits. You have to be some vouchers there. I think you have like a certain percentage off of exams. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, as you mentioned before, there is this great offer if you're now impacted by COVID mm -hmm. in any way uh, and you want to do. Um, learning about like Azure, not just Azure fundamentals, but also other exams. We have this great offer uh, in that case where I think you said like $15, right? Yeah. Um, that That is definitely something to look out for. Yeah, definitely. And as you said, I was looking at this Pearson, and I think I've done it in the past that if you are not Microsoft partner, right? If in case you're not Microsoft partner and you want to go ahead and do the certification for your employees, right? So they just give you an amazing uh, offer that, hey, you can go ahead and buy it maybe like say 100 vouchers for a team, and that would cost you just like eight or ten dollars. It's, it's as cheap as that, and you can when you use those vouchers uh, once uh, for a person multiple times he or she fails. So definitely you can go either if you're a partner, that's your brilliant good. If you're not a partner, if you're a college or if you're a university, you want your students to get the certification done, you can maybe go to Pearson.com and just check it out, uh, the micro certification uh, vouchers and you can just get that. So I think it, it's time, you're already five minutes more than the time I booked for your calendar event. Your time is very precious, <laughs> Thomas, I know that. But but before, before we, we just Take the final, uh, we will be just wrap it right. One final question that, that is very important. And when we were just rolling out this event on Twitter and all, people just asked that, hey, we should be asking you that, 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 uh, tomorrow, that, uh, today is 5th of uh, November, right? Followed by 6th, 7th, 8th. The days keep on coming in the week, then the year ends, and, and then all that stuff happens. The quick question is, uh, tomorrow is, 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 uh, is the next day. So when are you getting EC2 kiddies? This is very... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, will, we will see about that. Um, if you follow us on Twitter, um, mm -hmm. I think uh, you will definitely see when and if that is going to happen. Um, yeah. But uh, definitely stay tuned. We probably also have some non-cat related news and stuff going on. But uh, yeah, I get this question a lot. I do not have the answer for that yet. <laughs> yeah, it, it went even in Michael Ignite, right? I was looking at Donna. She was talking about uh, how much not get you one, but two kitties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that 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 was i i still like uh that was still a uh, pretty unfair i was also like <laughs> we're talking about one cat and now suddenly it's two uh it, like I, i'm just waiting for like uh for us to have a whole zoo at one point in time mm -hmm. yeah so that that that's uh, thomas twitter he's pretty active over there you can follow him. this guy has uh, followers followed by a followed by a K figure. So you know that if, if and he's in any case following you, well, damn, you are very lucky with that. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> All right, Thomas, that was an amazing session. Very interactive, I think. I just, uh, uh, one of the most fun and very knowledgeable session we had. Uh, we covered the entire ecosystem. We talked about Microsoft certification. We talked about Microsoft Learn. We talked about Microsoft Talks. We talked about how you can go ahead and get started. Talked about some of the services that we also did at the, at, at the uh, my Azure has to provide. You also talked about what you do, the amazing MEP program that led you to this, uh, this amazing cloud advocate that you do. Thank you so much, Thomas. Uh, we're really with the community waited for long to have you in the show. Uh, me, Stephen Simon, on behalf of the entire C-Sharp community and its millions of users, would like to thank you for your contribution to the community and we would love to have you back when you are available. And uh, thank you, actually. Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, it was an honor and a pleasure to be here. I really appreciate uh, what you do for the community. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like it's it's amazing. Uh, I really enjoy. I watched like other episodes of it mm -hmm. uh, and all the other work you're doing with your conferences and your virtual mm -hmm. events. Uh, uh, keep up the great work. Really appreciate it. Uh, and thank you very much again for having me. All right. So thank you, everyone. And uh, Thomas, have a good day ahead. And I will see you maybe next year, Europe, June, July. C-Sharp Connor is coming to Europe. For people who don't know, we are coming to Europe. We are being maybe like 10, 12 countries. And we are definitely coming to Switzerland. <laughs> All right. Bye, Thomas. Bye. Take care. Bye.